Greg and Ethan here today. Hi there, it's just us. And we wanted to speculate in this episode on what the impact of 5G and private LTE might be over the next several months and years on enterprise wireless. That is your precious Wi-Fi network. As in, will you need a private Wi-Fi network with APs you lovingly hang from the ceiling after a careful site survey and artisanally paint your heat maps and, and there's clever SSIDs with accompanying policies? Or will you be at the point where you can just dump much of that responsibility onto your telco and let them do all of that for you? Now, if this sounds like a ridiculous premise, hey, this is a thought exercise. We don't have all the answers here, but there is a lot to think about, both from the telco and enterprise side. And so Greg and I are going to take both sides of this argument and kind of have a conversation, roll these ideas around in our head and, and see what comes out. Because the reality is 5G is coming. It's finally actually at that point where we're going to see some deployments very soon. Maybe some deployments have actually happened. Private LTE is a thing that has uh, uh, been productized now. And, and we're hearing more and more about private LTE as a service that is going to be offered. Companies uh, like Salona are coming out of stealth with offerings in this space. So it seemed like a heck of a time to chin wag about this and to do it early, Greg, before we have yes. to uh, you know commit and actually know what we're talking about. We just kind of make it up as we go right now. There is a distortion here. The consumer market is much greater than the enterprise IT market. Back 10 years ago when we were doing this, the business market was the major profit driver and revenue driver for the mobile phone market. Consumer market is also is highly mm. dense and also, I would say, easier of a customer to deal with, by and large, on boredom, and then they just yeah. send you money every month, yeah. um, for, for the most part. But it's just so many of them, right? And if you've yeah. got, you know, 97% of your customers are doing this and 3% are doing this specialized, unique thing, and you, your whole business becomes optimized for the 97%, so your business special services just becomes a pain in the ass. Yeah, it's a different profit model, though. I mean, with, yeah. the, with the consumer, it's a bit of a price to the bottom. Maybe you've got, like in the U.S., you've got Verizon who tends to charge extra because they claim to have the best network, which is somewhat true based on my experience. But by and large, it's, that's, that's just a, it's a volume game. They're, they're making up the numbers on sheer number of subscribers. The enterprise game's different. They charge you a lot because you're a pain in the butt. You know, they charge you big money because you're, you're, you're annoying yeah. to deal with and you introduce complexity to the network and there's support mm. staff that's got to handle you, but they are raking in huge dollars uh, on the services that they provide for you. So, I mean, I think telcos are, you, you, it sounds like you're making the argument that telcos aren't going to be really be that incentivized to support the enterprise in this way because there's I not enough so. money to be made, but I, I, I think that there is. I think it's going to vary from country to country and it's going to vary... Um, in different regulatory models. So if the government owned telco has a monopoly, then they're going to have a business services because they're going to be able to make an excuse. You know, part of a government monopoly exists to make jobs, right? And so that things are good. What happens after that is going to be, you know, we'll see. But my point is, is that the bigger telcos in the advanced, you know, the G8 or the G20 countries, mm -hmm. they're looking at how much it costs to deliver a service. If you're delivering an enterprise product to customers, really, you don't want to be doing something in the towers or the network that causes complexity or problems. Really, you just want to be doing a billing hack in the software in the back end, right? Because then you can manage that. But the days of doing private network slices, like I saw today, uh, I was following a tweet stream from a particular conference and somebody popped up and said, they think that network slicing will never get off the ground because it's too complicated. And the complexity of the software and the licensing, the, the telco vendors, you know, product vendors want to charge extra for slicing. And then you've got to have the management software and then you have to have a cost strategy and then you have to have, oh, bloody, bloody, Yeah, blah. but that's not different from what we have in a private MPLS network today. Not from an architectural perspective. No, the technology is different. Yep. Um, but I, I think it's very similar to the offerings that, that already exist. But the MPLS networks were built 20 years ago when money yep. wasn't an object, right? In times when they had a monopoly, they could charge whatever they liked and they could go and forward, they could roll out MPLS and and make it profitable by just, you know, charging whatever the cost, whatever the cost was, they charge more than the cost. So, so this, just, just so I understand this, you're yeah. speculating that private LTE, you know, again, yeah. a term that we're hearing come up as, as going to be a service offering. 
you don't think that's going to be pushed very heavily by the telcos because you don't think they can make enough money delivering that service? I think in the same way, if you, you have installed a microwave link between two sites. I have, yeah. Where we go out to a wireless company and they come and bring it in and then they put it up. But that was so unusual that really there was only ever a handful of suppliers for that. That's what I think will happen is that it's mm. something that just a few companies will do. Increasingly, what the telcos are doing is they don't own those towers anymore. They don't want to own the towers. They share them, right? right? Because right, really right. what they yeah. want is just the service. They just want to send you a bill and make money. And so what they're doing is they move the towers into a company. So in the case of the UK, there's five, four uh, mobile phone companies and there's two companies that own towers. One is a joint venture between the other three. So the three companies own the tower company, but they all share the towers. So when they decide to put a tower in a location, three telcos just come and share the resources that are there. They share the antennas, they share the infrastructure. The cost is all done, but you don't know that that tower is equally owned by all of the different telcos in the company, right? Uh -huh. So right. if you're that business, does that company that puts up the towers have a mandate to go and put up private towers? Does it want to? Again, going back to the network slicing idea and private LTE, we're making an assumption here. I'm making an assumption that private LTE would be tied directly to network slicing technology, which has been written about ad nauseum quite a lot for the last few years. Um, why would I need private towers necessarily? Exactly. In, in other words, I'm I mean, arguing that it's a software I don't, I don't have an answer that here. We're being, we're, yes. that, that would be offered here. And, and, but you know, if you're running, if you're a... If you're a tower company running 10,000 towers in the UK mm -hmm. and you've got 20 private LTE towers, do you really want to have that? Or do you just want to say, we don't do that? If you're a factory and you've got this massive production line, you know, producing Kit Kats, you don't make custom one-off. <laughs> so, 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 so then, okay. So let's, let's play this out then. Someone wants this service and someone's going to provide it. Who does it? I think the, the answer then becomes the big global providers. So from an American perspective, I would look at Verizon, uh, perhaps AT&T and so on. Those who have a global footprint being able to provide an interesting global private network where they've got the both financial and uh, the, the will of the board to make mm. such a service because I can see it being profitable for someone like that. But the local and the regionals, nah, because why yeah. would they do that? Thank you.